Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by, by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. We fight the battles no one hears about. We drop into the middle of firefights to rescue others. And act as one-man air traffic control towers. We're the ones who go before all others. Join the fight. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Seilich, and we've got an exciting all-new show in store for you this week. We're going to do a little hunting, a little fishing, and a little dog training. We'll show you the first couple of tips in a new series we're starting on dog training. We'll show you how to pick out a good sporting dog puppy and what to do once you get that puppy home. Jimmy and Jordan have some other excitement in store for us this week. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have a little bit of everything going on on this week's show. We're going to kick things off in northern Michigan on an inland lake doing a little trout fishing. We're going to have a really cool youth hunt for you as well on this week's show, so lots of variety. Make sure you stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor the autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. The Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. WorkingPerson.com. From the factory floor to the job site and into the field. WorkingPerson.com supplies work boots and shoes, workwear, safety gear, and more. For individuals or outfitting your whole team. Learn more at workingperson.com. DTE believes to lead, we have to do what's right. So we're tripling renewables and cutting carbon emissions in half over the next 10 years. DTE. up in uh, northern uh, northeast Michigan and uh, we're fishing these beautiful crystal clear uh, stocked uh, lakes. Um, DNR has them stocked with uh, all three different species of trout and they are as beautiful as a spot as you can find and a uh, little tactic we're using here is uh, we're jigging um, soft plastics. Um, we found them um, most likely on the bottom and sometimes uh, suspended depending on the time of day here. There is a 15-inch uh, requirement for one, uh, for keeping a fish, and you're only allowed one. So one 15-inch fish, you're allowed to keep, uh, which we haven't seen a ton. Um, we've seen a, quite a bit in the 14-inch range. So just below that, we did get one earlier today that was a nice 15-inch rainbow that we're going to keep and uh, throw on the fire later. Finally, we're able to get a fish. It's been a tough, I would say, half hour. Uh, we're just taking these RBM jigs and bouncing them off bouncing them off the bottom with, with some plastics and uh, finally was able to get one to take. I mean, they, they nibble, 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 and you, you're missing more than, you, than you're hitting. But finally was able to pull one up and get it netted, and it was a nice brookie, I would say probably about 11 to 12 inches, and 
Uh, I mean, this is my first time to these lakes. These guys were out here last year and had a lot of great success. We're thinking the evening is probably going to be a little bit better for us, but hopefully it'll start turning on here pretty soon. Each one of these stocked lakes has a slightly different set of rules, so it's important to pay attention to what you can and can't do on each one. So one thing you have to be careful for up here too is um, on these you can't have any motorized uh, watercrafts. So we have two kayaks and a flat bottom on here. Um, you can, you could have an electric like uh, trolling motor out here. Now um, there are multiple ones that you can't have any uh, watercraft on other than like a tube. So you could float on a tube or you could walk around and uh, fish it from there. So what we did is we brought the flat bottom boat down and uh, a couple kayaks so we could get out and kind of reach uh, every point of these lakes. After a few hours of fishing, we decided to pack up and head to another lake. Although we were catching a few fish here and there, they were pretty small, and the guys were confident we could do better elsewhere. So we moved a few miles down the road to a different lake and started catching more and bigger fish almost immediately. Oh, they're brown. Oh, brown. Oh, well, we just switched lakes. And then the third cast, oh, well, I cast it out there and just letting it sink to the bottom and uh, just was bringing it back and this, uh, that brown that was suspended there <laughs> and put up a pretty good fight. You know, trying to target uh, trout in the lakes, you're kind of jigging like you do walleye, but on the end you get a trout and uh, it's nice to have the day off of work and the only people we've seen today has just been some horseback riders and it's been a beautiful day. We had uh, tough weather. We had 100 degree with humidity last week and now today it's been 75 sunny, no wind. I mean, you can't beat it. So that's a, this is Northern Michigan for you. Let it set for a second and there's another one. Here we go. Dude, you're blasting them. Ooh. Big Ooh, this is, this is a good fish. That's a big fish, man. There we go. All right. Just keep smacking them here. That's the third one. So after we had a pretty slow um, early uh, afternoon at our uh, first lake, um, we tried. Uh, we decided to skip to a lake that Ben and Matt had fished earlier and did really successful. Since we've been here, Ben has popped off. I think three fish right away, a couple nice browns, beautiful rainbow, and then I was fi finally able to get into a nice uh, brook trout with a beautiful pink fins and a nice colored up belly on it. Really, really pretty fish. And, and for, you know, one of the things I really like about these lakes is for stock trout, they're gorgeous in here, especially the rainbows. The rainbow trout are really, really beautiful. The brook trout, I would say, are, you know, just second to them, and then the browns are just gorgeous, gorgeous fish for being stock trout. Finally, first fish on the second lake. I was feeling left out. All these guys were catching fish all around me, and I finally, as I like to say, I got off the schneid. So, I mean, you never would have thought if you would have asked me, you know, five, ten years ago, hey, you want to go up and catch some trout out of a lake? I would have thought you were crazy because, I mean, stream fishing is what we've always done and wading and casting and just the intimacy of the stream is something that you know you, you can't match but you come up here when the streams are warm you catch these trout out of this pond it's the best cool nice brown trout there deep brownish yellow color i would say you know probably the thing that i find most unique about it other than just how beautiful it is is the fact that these trout are sitting here in at the bottom, I'm getting 52 degree uh, temperatures, but the surface temps of a lot of these lakes are 70s and 80s. Um, and so it's just very interesting to see so much action uh, in the water columns, like in Rainbow. suspended nice. areas and everything, because as you're progressing through that water column, it's heating up the temperatures that trout wouldn't typically they live in. And so it's just neat to see them so active. You'll see fish feeding on the surface uh, in these lakes all day long. So they're coming up into 80 degree water when they can 
sit down in 52 degree uh, water. But I think it also lends to a really active morning bite and an active evening bite as well because there's such a vari uh, variation in the temperature throughout that, that water column. You know, you get a really definitive thermocline. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just such a unique experience. experience. We see a lot of our trout sitting in rivers and streams uh, around the state. And so it's just nice to do a little bit of pond fishing and get some action. It's been such a cool day being out here with everybody. Uh, again, like they've probably said, you just can't beat Northern Michigan. And, and uh, for us, trout are particularly attractive. And so it's just been nice to be a, a tight group of friends here today with, uh, with the options to experience all three species of trout that we have here in the state. So. All right, looks like we've got our next keeper, Rainbow. We have one in the cooler already, but looks like we're going to be able to have a decent meal now. The, the struggle has been 15 inches is the, the minimum length, and we've caught about mm, at least a dozen 14 inch fish, so we've been searching for that extra, that extra keeper so we could have a good meal. So look, really looking forward to it. So after kind of a rough start to this morning and yeah. a slower evening, Matt helped uh, make a good decision and coming back to this lake where him and Ben had um, success earlier today. And really, since we've been back here, we started hitting fish right away. Um, what a perfect evening. The weather, the fish uh, picked up. It's absolutely perfect, beautiful. Couldn't ask for anything better. Get some apples, and then we're gonna put a little onion in it too, and then a little seasoning. We ended the night with a couple of different trout recipes, one that involved apple and another that involved lemon. And I'm happy to report that both were very good. Special thanks to Matt and the crew for letting me tag along on an incredible night of fishing here in Northeast Michigan. Well, we here at Michigan Outdoors Television have really always been about trying to get new people into the outdoors to expand our hunting and fishing community here in the great state of Michigan. And the youth hunt that happens here in early part of September is a big part of that. And so on this hunt, we're going to tag along with an 11 year old who I tell you what is going to be one heck of a sportsman. As the youth hunt draws close, a lot of kids just can't wait to hit the woods. One such kid is Caleb Spoolman. Caleb lives near Marne, Michigan in Ottawa County. Caleb is 11 and has taken a handful of deer in his young hunting career, and he was hoping to add a nice buck to the list this youth hunt. I'm Caleb Spoolman. It's opening day at youth hunt. We took the morning off to not bump the bucks back there, and gonna see, we've been scouting, seeing some nice bucks. So with opening day of the youth season here, Caleb was able to get a field with Brandon Nutt, who works with us here at the show from time to time, and Caleb just happens to be Brandon's nephew. So today was a family affair as they hit this nice bean field for the evening hunt. Well, it didn't take long and some deer started to filter into the field. The question would be, would one of the nicer bucks they'd been seeing show up or not? Now, the youth hunt is surprisingly controversial to some hunters. There is a segment of folks that think there should be no youth season. Some don't mind the youth getting first dibs on the deer, but don't like the fact that once the guns start going off, it changes the pattern of the deer. Well, and some think this early season is the best part of all the hunting seasons. So whatever camp you're in, hopefully we can all agree that whatever we can do to get more kids into hunting is worth doing. As for this hunt, well, things got interesting pretty fast as a nice buck was in the field.
Okay, you got him. You hit him. You hit him good there, bub. Okay. He's a nice block. Good shot. The second shot you hit him, bud. Yep. Okay. Give us a quick recap of what happened. I know you're excited, but. Okay, so he can't. That was some small bucks. Didn't want to shoot them. So he came out about 160. Came in 150. I think I missed the first shot, but I quickly racked another one. Put him in on. Well, Caleb was quite the pro on this hunt. Yeah. After missing the first shot, he quickly racked another round and made a great shot at 150 yards. Pretty impressive for an 11 year old. Okay, yeah, just shot at a nice eight point. I'm gonna go see if we can find some blood before it gets dark. So the plan was to get a good sense of just where the buck was standing when it was hit, then track to the woods and then go get the rest of the family. However, once they did that, they had to go get Caleb's sister's buck as well. So after that, well, it was time to find his buck with his dad and Brandon. It was a short track job and they were able to find Caleb's nice buck. Look at that dude! Yeah! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Woo. What do you think, buddy? He's cool, huh? That explains why I said the one side was like smaller or something. Yeah. See what I yeah. mean? Yeah. He's a nice buck, bud. Yeah. yeah. This nice. side's nice. Nice two year old. What do you think, buddy? You worked hard for him. You passed uh -huh. him about. I don't. I don't know. They're coming and going. Could have been ten. Could have been six. But you passed up a lot of different bucks. Seen about thirty deer. What a great hunt, and thanks to Caleb for letting us tag along. The youth hunt is something that many kids look forward to every year, and as a dad who has taken kids on this hunt, it is pretty special indeed. With hunter numbers slowly fading, it's days like these, and it's small game season, it's the bow season, it's waterfowl season, all of them are important to keep new hunters hitting the field here in Michigan's Out of Doors. When it comes to hunting here in Michigan, whether it's waterfowl or upland hunting, there's nothing better than taking your own dog out there and hunting together. In this next series of segments, we're gonna show you how to pick out your sporting dog as a puppy and what to do once you get your puppy home. Mark June has been a dog trainer and professional bird hunting guide for 40 years and is now the manager at Pheasant Ridge Hunt Club in Imlay City. We recently stopped by Mark's place for some tips on picking out a new sporting dog. As you guys can see here today, we got five little Brittany puppies. They're six and a half weeks old. How they socialize, they're just, this is a great time of their life. This is when you can see a little bit of just the beginning stages of the personality, but I don't make no judgments on, on picking puppies. If I was coming to a total stranger and I didn't know the guy, I would make check over A, the pedigree, kind of the background. Um, just my own personal preferences. I don't like a dog with an overbite. I would check and make sure they didn't have an overbite. Um, on these dogs, the dew claws are taken off and you want to make definitely make sure that the, the breeder has taken the dew claws off. If you're a grouse hunter, you, you may not want all the brown on the back of the dog because the ferns are brown, right? So you'd want a little white on them, maybe a little white on the tip of the tail. A lot of it's a personality, the one that catches your eye. I feel like they're all, all born equal. The more you work the dog, the more you're gonna get out of the dog. You know, what I would recommend to people, like if you're looking to purchase a bird dog, first figure out what kind of breed you want. Maybe go to, maybe go to the clubs, look on the internet, see there's a lot of YouTube videos, how things are working and everything else. You know, I mean, there's no sense you buying, yeah, these dogs will retrieve a duck, but if you're gonna be a large duck hunter, yeah, you might wanna buy a lab or a golden retriever or a Chesapeake or a Boykin Spaniel. Figure out what breed you like that will adjust to your family, your living quarters, your time span and everything else. Then talk to the breeder, you know, what, what personalities does this dog got? You, when you get him home, that's when we start the training of the dog. You, know, you don't send a kid to school when he's 14 years old. You start him young, that's how things are. The best dogs I had, it seems like they're started early. Taking them for car rides, socialization. The, the things you want to be careful about is the noise factor. You know, I've seen a lot of dogs ruin. You go to a 4th July party, fireworks, firecrackers go off, then the dog is scared of loud noises, AKA a shotgun eventually. Just remember the, the price of the dog, cheap or expensive both ways does not mean nothing. Just because you get a high priced dog don't mean it's better than a cheap priced dog. But just remember this commitment part, it's, it's probably the cheapest part of the whole deal is buying a dog. It's gonna be a part of your family for the next 12 years. So I don't think you would 
you would go worry about cost of the dog in that part of it, is my opinion. They could be the best pet in the world, and there's nothing better in this world is when you and your best friend are out in the field hunting and you're shooting birds and having a blast. There is nothing, nothing better than that. It's a great feeling to hunt over your own dog. And speaking of hunting, next we headed to the hunt club to start the training process on a 12-week-old pup. Here we have a little German Short Hair Pointer named Avery. She's a little female, a good friend of mine, Kyle, has her. We're just starting it. Now what do we do? We got our pup, now what do we do? One of the things I like to do, is, is, as you can tell, she's getting bored and everything else, but we want to get start to get our hands on her because to finish a dog out, we got to be able to get our hands on him. We're going to do a little leash work today. What I like is a, start off with is a little bit of a choke collar and a short little leash. And what we want to do is start the beginnings of heel and wool. This is the kind of stuff we want to teach her heel and wool on this part. Heel, good girl, whoa. What I do here, Jenny, is I put it like my hand up for a stop sign. We're starting to teach them what whoa means. On a pointing breed, I do not like them to sit down. I kind of teach them to stand up a little bit. Now you can do this with a lab or any of the other breeds. You can teach them sit instead of whoa. This is the beginning stages. You're getting your hands on her. So you'll see when they're on point, you can caress them and everything else. Teach them whoa. This is how I kind of like, I like always somewhat of a controlled situation when I first introduce the dog to birds and stuff. A lot of it you can do by yourself, but this is a two-person team. And so today I'm going to help Kyle introduce his dog Avery to the first birds. So I'll go out here and I'm going to drag a line. I throw the bird down so it's like there like that. As I drag the bird, it's flopping a little bit, leaving a little scent. So then I, so now we got about a 10-foot line. I set my tip of the pole down. Avery, why don't you come on in with your dog? Just keep walking her in a little bit. Now she should, when she gets on the scent right there, Okay, she's smelling a little bit. Pet her a little bit. See how this is a controlled situation? The bird didn't fly off. She's pointing real nice. If she comes in on it, that's okay. We kind of want, we let her come in a little bit on it, then I'm gonna hold every restrainer just a little bit. Have Kyle come on up so she kind of comes up to the bird a little bit. When she, then I'm gonna fly it. Then I'm gonna go like this. Hold her back a second, Kyle. Then I, this is what I call flying the bird. Then I'll drop it back down, lay a little line. You wanna pet her, Kyle, and say, okay, good girl, and come right to where it landed, right over there where it landed, and let her kind of track it up a little bit. Okay, there's, then when she, there she goes. She smelled it, saw it. Now you wanna tell her kind of good girl, Wool at the time, a little bit, nice slow voice. This is where a wool part comes in. What you want to do next, Kyle, is kind of with your off hand, you'll, when you walk up this time, I want you to hold your hand up like a stop sign. That's what we taught her in wool when we're holding that sign. There you go. And then you kind of like, I'm going to flush it, okay? That's the flying of the bird. And she'll come around, and I'll fly it over here. Make one more time. We're going to do it one more time, okay? Now she's got it. Tell her good girl. You can kind of back away from her just a little bit. Let her point on her own. As you can tell, this dog has an incredible amount of point, incredible amount of intensity. She, she has all the tools. She's, if done right, she should be a real dandy dog. Look how she points, guys. Look how that dog points right there. That's incredible. I grab the bird like this, and Kyle will hold her collar. And I say, good girl, kind of let her get a little feather, a little taste, and that's good. There's how a pointing dog got introduced to its first bird, folks, and everything was all good and calm, everything else. She didn't catch her first one, and she's all positive and everything else. You, you don't want to overdo this little trick, but this is just kind of one of the ones I like to talk about, control situation. Next time, Mark will show us how to step up training on an 18-month-old dog and shoot a bird over him. Stay tuned for more dog training tips on upcoming episodes. Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stay tuned in upcoming weeks. There's all sorts of great things happening around our state this time of year. We'll do a little bit of fall fishing. We'll be getting into those hunting seasons. And we'll show you a bear hunt from the Baldwin unit. And we'll be introducing you to a group of young ladies, very special people, who are able to harvest some deer. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always check us out online. 
Well, that's right, Jenny. Online, always a great way to kind of keep tabs on us. Of course, you can do that through our website. We're also on most of the social media platforms as well as YouTube, so lots of places you can check us out. And we will have a lot of brand new stuff coming over the next several weeks as the hunting seasons are now underway. It is a great time of the year to be a sportsman. I know I say that a lot, but it is so true here in our great state. If we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at GreenMarkEquipment.com. By G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime bows, manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan. G5 offers a line of archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at G5Outdoors.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck. Deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. White-tailed deer in the tall pine trees I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love this land I am a Michigan man From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe Kalamazoo, east to Monroe To St. Marie and back again I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love this land